Hi, Bess. What the heck was that? Hello, besties, and welcome back to my channel. You already know what day it is. It is wrap-up time. I read, I think it was eight books before I entered a massive reading slump. Three of the books I read were over 800 pages, so it's actually a lot of books, I feel. So we are just gonna hop right in. I have these physical books and then two that I mostly listened to read some on the Kindle. First up, we have Dre Cora by Lynette Nani. This is the fourth book in the Madoran Chronicles series by Lynette Nani. I feel like this is a very kind of under- hyped series but it's essentially about our main girl Alex who she's meant to go to this boarding school like on earth like a normal school but when she gets there she essentially gets transported into another world. I just really like this series because it just feels so cozy. The whole like politics and like magic system I guess is just really easy to understand and there's so many likable characters in this book and the one thing I like about this series is every kind of book so far has kind of unlocked another dimension in the world. Like this one the main focus was like another type of world or setting than the third book or the second one. I'm really loving this series you guys. It is kind of mundane and just like kind of boring at some parts but I love the characters so much in this. It is very YA so keep that in mind but I really love this series and I highly recommend it because they're really quick and easy books. The next book I read I am so proud of myself for finally finishing this book. I started this book back in April of 2023 and I finished it finally almost a year later. Imagine me the Shatter Me series. This is the last like full book in the series. I can't rate this higher than a three but I'm gonna give it a 3.5 because once I got into it it did get really good and action-packed but it took me I mean as you can tell as I said eight months to read just to like page 100 because the first like 100 pages of this book were so repetitive and just literally nothing happened. Literally nothing happened in the first 100 pages and I struggled so hard to get through them. I tried to audiobook it. I tried to kindle it. I just tried everything and I couldn't get through this book but once I finally did did, I was really enjoying this story actually but since I did have such a hard time getting into it and I don't really think about this book honestly that much it's gonna be a 3.5. This series as a whole I really enjoyed like the first half of the series but I feel like once it took a turn around four or five I think it kind of lost me a bit like it got kind of far-fetched and like she just wanted to continue the series when it could have ended. It felt a little dragged out but I do really love the characters in this book. There's two guys especially in this book that I love and I just love all the side characters too. Convince me to read the last novella. Please. I am begging you. Please convince me guys. I think next I read Betting on You. This is going to be in a reading vlog coming soon I think. Same with the next two books I'm going to talk about so I'm not going to say a ton on them. I love Lynn Painter so much. She is definitely an auto buy author. Like I immediately buy her the book she comes out with. This one took me a while to read though. I bought it right away and actually my Barnes had it out like a couple days early than the release date so I had it so early but it took me a long time to read. Also I love how it's pink. It's adorable. This one felt kind of cringy and like so incredibly like tropey I'm gonna say. I just felt like it was a big trope dump. Like she just kind of put every trope possible in this book. Like there was fake dating, there was the one bed, there was enemies to lovers. It was like just everything in this book. But it was still such a cute story and I really did enjoy it. But I did wish that we got more background on the guy in this book. There were some things mentioned about his past or that he was dealing with that I felt like we could have dived more into. So I think I'm gonna go with a 3.25 for this one because I did really enjoy it and it was such a fun time to listen to on um, Spotify audiobooks. I loved that. Imagine that was a segue to an ad. Imagine. Spotify. I would kill an ad. I would be so good. I'm just kidding. But like please. I did like the relationship in this one but there was one thing specifically that kind of just didn't sit right with me what they were doing. So Bailey our main girl she has a stepdad in this and and she like doesn't really vibe with him. So Charlie kind of helps her try to make this plan to like be obnoxious to him and kind of disrupt her mom and his relationship. And that just kind of felt really like juvenile and childish to me and kind of like unwarranted because the guy was fine. Like he was fine. And also there was something in this book that was kind of brought up like a couple times and kind of hyped up and nothing even came of it. That is my thoughts on this book. Still such a cute read, a great palate cleanser, but just nothing that I think about or that stuck with me. 
And the next book I read was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I think I did like 50-50, like listened to it and kindled it. I think I read it in middle school. I say this in my reading vlog that's gonna be out, I think after this. I thought I read it in middle school, like when it was first like popular back then, but I don't remember anything that would have happened. Like I remember the first chapter and the setting of it, but I don't remember anything else. So I don't know if I actually finished it in middle school. I wish I would have because it was so good. I'm gonna give this book a four star. I freaking loved it. I loved it. I really like Cinder as a character, honestly, and I really also liked the guy in this and just like the whole plot. It was so interesting. The main kind of storyline is that Cinder is a cyborg, so she's part like robot, kind of. But in this world, the cyborgs are kind of like frowned upon. Not necessarily like hated or anything, but they are kind of frowned upon. And it is a Cinderella retelling story. So you get the evil stepmom, you get the stepsisters, and the ball aspect, the prince. And I really enjoyed this twist on the Cinderella story because you could see the similarities but it wasn't just a straight up copy like there were so many aspects about it that were different there were some things in this book that kind of dragged out a bit but overall it was really interesting and I really liked how in this book Cinder's a mechanic because just getting that like interesting like character trait about her I guess was really interesting to see because I feel like I haven't really read a book before where it's about that or the girl has like that type of interest but I really enjoyed it and I loved the side characters in this book there were so many great side characters and overall just a solid book. And then I went straight into the next one, Scarlet. So this one, I thought that it was going to be more focused on the new character, Scarlet, but it really does like a 50-50 balance between still focusing on Cinder Story and Scarlet, and I loved that. I thought that that was done so well, how you get both of their stories, and then eventually how they meet up. I loved it. And I really enjoyed both of the characters. I did feel like they were kind of similar, like the characters, like I got them confused at one point. Like I would be listening, I'm like, who are we talking about? One point in my reading vlog, I was like listening. I'm like, I thought we were in the other character's perspective. So I was like freaking out because I'm like, when did this happen? Like what? She's this, she's that, whatever. It was still super good. And in this book, you kind of get introduced to a lot of new characters actually. And they are all so interesting and learning about their backgrounds and their history is so good. And there's so many like funny comments in this book and just funny scenes in general. I love this one. I think I like this better than Cinder. I think we're going to give it a 4.25. It was so, so good good. I can't wait to continue the series. Next up, we read... I actually think I read this one earlier in the month. I'm just gonna talk about them all together. The Crescent City series. I can't believe I read this all this month. That's literally insane. But first up, we have Crescent City. Going into this series, I had no clue what to expect. Obviously, it's still fantastic, but like it's not her best series, which I knew that going into it that it would be my third place series for her books. But I feel like people also say how confusing it is and just not that action-packed, I guess. But I ended up really enjoying this book. I think I'm gonna give the whole series five stars because I love Sarah. J Mass with my whole heart. She's my queen. She is my idol. Like I love her books and anything she does I will worship. I think I'm gonna give them all five stars. Honestly, sue me but this book it's essentially a murder mystery that's about all we got for plot but i really enjoyed it i loved it i was hooked the entire time and i feel like the whole murder mystery aspect it's more than that just know that but i really liked all the characters this book followed and how throughout the story they kind of develop and you just learn so much more about each character and what they do and there's just so many scenes in this book that i will remember forever that are engraved in my mind because they are just so iconic. I loved it so much. There is just so many characters in this book that I just love and I feel like that's one thing that Sarah J Maas does so good is create characters that you will think about for the rest of your life because that is what she did with this book. Overall though, don't go into this thinking it's going to be super action-packed and like fantasy, war, drama, battles, death, all of that. It's really kind of just a chill fantasy book. There is a lot you have to comprehend because it is pretty info dumpy. But overall, I honestly felt like I had a pretty good understanding I feel like this one was actually the most confusing for me out of the whole series, which is really interesting. I loved it so much. I love this world, how there's just so many different types of people. There's mermaids, there's wolves, there's vampires, there's angels, there's fae. I really enjoyed that because I love reading about all those types of characters, I guess. And I just loved how she brought them all together. And just the world that this is in, it was a little weird because it's like in the future, so they have like phones and technology and all that, but I still really liked it. And then we have 
have House of Sky and Breath. This book, another five star. I mean, what else am I supposed to rate it? I don't know. I love this one so much more than the first one. Like, not like so much more, but it was just better to me. It's still kind of not very plot heavy and just like mystery figuring stuff out, going on little tasks type vibe. But I really loved this one. I feel like in this one, especially, you really dive into the side characters in this book. And I really enjoyed that because the side characters in this book are incredible. And learning about their stories and their missions was so interesting to me and I just feel so connected to even just the side characters in this book. This one is definitely really the turning point in the series where kind of their goals change completely and I really liked certain aspects of this book with how the characters went about their tasks. Like there were some characters that made stupid acts decisions. I still love them so much and I just really felt connected to all the characters in this series. Like I'd be reading someone's POV and I'd be like oh I can't wait for the next one and all of them would be equally as interesting. The ending of this book that everyone talks about if you haven't watched my reading vlog go watch it of this entire series. I read all three books in that but my reaction to the ending I was like still shocked because I can't believe that it happened but I did get it spoiled for me. And then we have House of Flame and Shadow. I don't know for sure if the series is going to continue. I think I saw somewhere that's not completed but I don't know. I feel like this was a good way to wrap it up. I still have some questions but they're nothing like major. Overall I really enjoyed how this book ended. It's like common for Sarah J Mass to like lead up to the last hundred pages and the last hundred pages are just insane. So when I got to that point and we were like just starting to get the main action I'm like it's gonna get crazy and it was but I really enjoyed how this one wrapped up and same with this one. You get more insight into to certain characters and their missions and I really enjoyed learning about those characters backgrounds and missions that they had to go on. I feel like this one specifically you got a lot of answers to a lot of questions and I feel like there's two big questions that I got answers to in this book and I really appreciated that and there's just some characters that have been present from the first book that you see their stories tie up in this one and it's just like I love it. Overall such a fun series but again just know going into this that it is completely different from like any other fantasy book because it is just insane. I totally recommend this series. Honestly, I loved it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, let me know down below and I will see you guys next time. Peace!